Pharmacology Medications that affect the nervous system Let's begin by quickly reviewing the autotomic nervous system. It's separated into two main divisions, the sympathetic and the parasympathetic, and controls blood pressure, heart and respiratory rates, body temperature, digestion, metabolism, the balance of water and electrolytes, the production of body fluids, saliva, sweat, and tears, urination, defecation, sexual response, and other processes. In general, the sympathetic division prepares the body for stressful or emergency situations, such as flight or flight. In doing so, it increases the heart rate and the force of the heart's contractions, opens or dilates the airways to make breathing easier, and stimulates the body to release stored energy for increased muscular strength. The sympathetic division also causes palms to sweat, pupils to dilate, and hair to stand on end, while at the same time slowing body processes that are less important in emergencies, such as digestion and urination. The parasympathetic division, on the other hand, controls body processes during ordinary situations, like rest and digest, or feed and breed. In general, its job is to conserve and restore. When the parasympathetic takes over, it slows the heart rate, decreases blood pressure, and stimulates the gastrointestinal tract to process food and eliminate waste. The energy obtained from the processed food is used to restore and build tissues during this time of rest and digest. Sympathetic and parasympathetic divisions are often described as always in opposition of each other. Really, their relationship is more complementary. One analogy is that the sympathetic division is like the accelerator and the parasympathetic division is like the brake. Naturally occurring catecholamines, norepinephrine, epinephrine, and dopamine act as hormones or neurotransmitters and are used to communicate primarily with the sympathetic branch of the autotomic nervous system. Acetylcholine also acts as a chemical messenger communicating with the autotomic nervous system, but generally speaking, acetylcholine deals primarily with the parasympathetic branch. Nerve fibers that secrete norepinephrine are called adrenergic nerve fibers, and nerve fibers that secrete acetylcholine are called cholinergic nerve fibers. Don't get the terms catecholamine and cholinergic confused. Drugs or chemicals that enter our body can act on cholinergic or adrenergic receptors, which can have similar effects as acetylcholine and norepinephrine. Let's look at drugs that affect the sympathetic nervous system first. Adrenergics are a classification of drugs used to mimic the naturally occurring catecholamines, epinephrine, norepinephrine, and dopamine, or stimulate the release of norepinephrine, thus causing a sympathetic response. When you think of adrenergic, think adrenaline and dry. In the eyes, pupils will be dilated. Vasoconstriction results in reduced mucus secretions, decreased salivation, and dry mouth. Also, constipation occurs, intestines relax, bronchial dilation in the lungs, coronary artery dilation, and an increase in the contractile force and rate of the heart. Therapeutically, adrenergics are used to combat life-threatening disorders, which include acute attacks of bronchial asthma, shock, cardiac arrest, and allergic reactions. In addition, these types of drugs are oftentimes used in nasal decongestants and appetite suppressants. Keeping things simple, adrenergic drugs stimulate alpha, beta-1, and or beta-2 receptor sites. As I stated a minute ago, remember in general, alpha affects vessels, beta-1 affects the heart, and we have one heart, and beta-2 affects the lungs, and we have two lungs. Alpha adrenergic agonists are used to treat hypotension, typically in life-threatening situations through vasoconstriction. An example is norepinephrine, otherwise known as levofed. Pseudoepinephrine is a sympathomimetic used as a nasal decongestant and is commonly found in dimetap, pseudofed, senofed, and trimenic. Beta-1 adrenergic agonists are used to treat bradycardia, low cardiac output, paroxysmal atrial or nodal tachycardia, and ventricular fibrillation. 
An example is dopamine hydrochloride, also known as Dobutrex. Beta-2 adrenergic agonists are used to treat acute and chronic bronchial asthma, emphysema, bronchitis, acute hypersensitivity or allergic reactions, and aids in delaying delivery in premature labor. Examples include albuterol sulfate, also known as Prevental, Venolin, or Volmax, metaproteranol sulfate, and terbutaline. The catecholamine dopamine improves blood flow to the kidneys by vasodilating renal and mesenteric arteries and is used primarily in acute renal failure, heart failure, and shock. An example of dopamine is dopamine hydrochloride, also known as intrapin. However, because dopamine cannot cross the blood-brain barrier, dopamine given as a drug does not directly affect the central nervous system. Rather, it does so indirectly. Adrenergic blocking agents or antagonists. These are drugs that selectively interact with alpha and beta receptors to inhibit sympathetic stimulation or block the release of norepinephrine from storage sites. The depression of adrenergic nerves results in a vasodilation effect reducing peripheral vascular resistance, which is why drugs in this category are mostly antihypertensive medications. Now let's discuss drugs that affect the parasympathetic nervous system. As we stated before, acetylcholine acts as a chemical messenger that communicates primarily with the parasympathetic branch of the autotomic nervous system. Nerve fibers that secrete acetylcholine are called cholinergic nerve fibers. Stimulation of cholinergic nerve fibers is achieved either directly or indirectly. Direct acting agents, or cholinergics, activate the cholinergic receptor sites by mimicking the effects of acetylcholine. The effects of cholinergic stimulation includes vasodilation of blood vessels, slower heart rate by decreasing the firing rate of the SA node, constriction of bronchioles, constriction of pupils, intestinal cramps, increased secretion of mucus in the respiratory tract, and an increased secretion of saliva, sweat, and tears. When you think of cholinergic, think of WET, an acronym oftentimes used to summarize the effects of an overstimulation of the parasympathetic nervous system is SLUD. This stands for salivation, lacrimation, urination, digestion, and defecation. In general, cholinergics have limited medical use, although some are used to relieve urinary incontinence and in eye surgeries. Cholinergic blocking agents, also known as anticholinergics, are compounds which compete with and prevent acetylcholine from stimulating the receptor site and thus acts as an antagonist or against the parasympathetic nervous system. This indirectly causes a sympathetic nervous system response. By blocking acetylcholine receptors, anticholinergics cause a drying effect. Results include decreased bronchial secretions, decreased salivary secretions, decreased sweating, increased heart rate by increasing conduction through the myocardium, and pupil dilation. Like we stated earlier, the sympathetic and parasympathetic divisions are always complementing one another. When one is reduced, the other takes over. This relationship is why an anticholinergic that blocks a parasympathetic response indirectly results in a sympathetic response. Common anticholinergics include atropine and atrovent. Cholinesterase inhibitors. Once a cholinergic nerve is stimulated, it requires the enzyme cholinesterase to return it to its normal resting state. Indirect stimulation of cholinergic nerves occurs by inhibiting the cholinesterase enzyme. This permits a buildup of acetylcholine on the nerve receptor sites. As a result, acetylcholine increases in quantity and repeatedly stimulate receptors. Blocking cholinesterase and the accumulation of acetylcholine will cause an overstimulated parasympathetic response. Cholinesterase inhibitors are commonly found in chemical warfare nerve agents, organophosphates, and certain insecticides. Atropine can be used as an antidote for organophosphate poisoning caused by the inhibition of cholinesterase. The atropine blocks the excess acetylcholine but does nothing to reverse the inhibition of the cholinesterase.
In summary, remember when you think of cholinergic, think of wet. In the eyes, pupils will be constricted. Vasodilation results in mucus secretions in the nose, increased saliva secretions in the mouth, nausea, vomiting, abdominal cramps, diarrhea, sphincter relaxation, bronchi constriction in the lungs, coronary artery constriction, and a decrease in the contractile force and rate of the heart. When you think of adrenergic, think adrenaline and dry. In the eyes, pupils will be dilated. Vasoconstriction results in reduced mucus secretions in the nose, decreased salivation and dry mouth, constipation, intestines relax, bronchial dilation in the lungs, coronary artery dilation, and an increase in the contractile force and rate of the heart. Brought to you by EMSSuccess.com.